Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about self-confidence. We are talking about how to boost your self-esteem, how to build real confidence. We are talking about how to overcome insecurities. We are also talking about how to know your what. It's time. Let us have this conversation. It is really, really important that we talk about these things because these are issues that needs to be talked about. Certain things needs to be addressed. And so I'm just going to get straight into the point without wasting time. So I'm gonna be giving you guys seven real tips, seven good tips on how to build real confidence, how to boost your self-esteem, basically how to turn from being insecure to being a body. Stop seeking approval from others you have to stop seeking approval from others honestly you don't need it i'm going to be very very real in this video and i'm going to say it the way it is all right you need to start posting that picture without asking somebody if you look perfect in that picture you like it you feel comfortable in your skin it's not hurting anybody do it you need to start trusting your own opinion your opinion is valid stop going around looking for someone else to give you approval you do not need reassurance from other people whenever you want to make a decision when you decide to do that you're constantly telling yourself that you don't trust your own opinion and you need someone to tell you what to do in your life so i'm actually just using posting picture as an example there are several things that you decided not to do because somebody gave you a second opinion and deep down it hurts you so bad because you actually know that you would have been good at it if you actually did it and that is exactly what happens when you go seeking approval from others i always say this if you know what you're doing is right and you are not hurting anybody and you are comfortable with what you are doing do it now i'm not saying that you shouldn't ask for advice now there's a big difference between asking for advice and seeking approval from others there's also a big difference between advice and opinions and people tend to mix these two together which is very crazy advice is totally different from opinion listen to what i'm about to say advice is given based on first-hand knowledge advice is given based on experience based on facts like the person has actually been through this thing so they are in the right position to give you an advice because they've experienced it or they know about this thing like first-hand knowledge facts that is advice opinions on the other hand is given based on how someone feels not necessarily what the person knows it's just how the person feels about a certain situation the person hasn't experienced it the person doesn't know anything about it it's just a feeling like mm, in my opinion i just feel like the dictionary meaning says that opinions are views or judgment formed about something not necessarily facts or knowledge oh i just feel like it's not the right time to start that business i just feel like it won't work out that is an opinion this is coming from someone who doesn't know how to run a business in my opinion i feel like you shouldn't do youtube because everybody is doing it or i feel like you shouldn't start that podcast because everybody has a mic on instagram i feel like podcasts are getting extremely saturated and everybody wants to do podcasts so why do you want to do podcasts? Maybe if you had started YouTube 12 years ago, maybe you would have been an OG by now. But you starting YouTube in 2023 is just a waste of time. The industry is saturated and you shouldn't do it. This is somebody's opinion. This is somebody who does not even know how to create content. This is somebody who has never even held a camera in their life. If you're not giving me real advice based on experience, based on facts, based on first-hand knowledge, Keep it. I do not want to hear it. You don't know this, but at the end of the day, these opinions, they just end up bringing down your self-confidence and your self-esteem. Most of the time, those feelings, most of the time, those people that are giving you their opinions based on their feelings, check it. Most of the times, those feelings are feelings of jealousy and feelings of envy because they can't do it or because they can't imagine you coming up with such a wonderful idea so at the end of the day they try to just do everything in their power to discourage you from starting that business or, or to discourage you from doing what you've always wanted to do just because they can't imagine themselves doing it second tip is to get rid of self-doubt listen ladies guys the fastest way to bring down your self-confidence is to have self-doubt. Just doubt yourself. That is the easiest way. You're going to kill your self-confidence. You're going to kill any self-esteem that you had 
in you you are constantly doubting yourself constantly doubting your knowledge you are constantly doubting your strength your own strength something you know that you are good at you are still doubting yourself you're not even sure you're good at what you said you are good at you finish a training and it's time for you to put your skills to work and you're not even sure about those skills you're not even sure that oh did i actually learn anything in this training but you know you learned something like you know you did well you know you came out well but this self-doubt just starts coming and you're like am i even sure of what i'm doing if you're not sure about certain things go back to the reading table and dust your books i tell you guys this is what is holding us back from developing real confidence and that is having self-doubt and let me tell you the best way to get rid of self-doubt this is something that i have tried and this is something that i have experienced so this is something that i know step out of your comfort zone this is not my comfort zone you guys know that this is not my comfort zone you guys know that my comfort zone is vlogs vlogging is my comfort zone putting my camera in different angles that is my comfort zone putting my camera here on the ceiling putting my camera on the floor putting my camera in the middle of the road that is my comfort zone i am very very good at it sitting down here and having this kind of conversation with you guys and telling you guys certain things you guys know that this is not my comfort zone and this is the only way that i can actually remove self-doubt this is the only way that i can know that mm, i know that i can do this in at the end of the day this is the only way i know that i can boost my self-confidence by stepping out of my comfort zone eradicating the self-doubt once you constantly prove to yourself that you can put yourself in an unfamiliar situation and get through it your self-doubt will fade away whereas the fastest way to grow your self-doubt is to say you're going to do something and you end up not doing it do not be scared of making mistakes do not be scared of embarrassment embarrassment is a choice you choose to be embarrassed this is why i like all those wrong one way models you guys know those runway models right those guys i have seen these models fall down and they stand up like nothing happened like they stand up they wear their shoe and they keep on walking sometimes they stand up they don't even wear their shoe but they just keep on walking the same thing with artists i have seen several artists perform on stage and they fall down and they stand up and they just does themselves like it's nothing embarrassment is a choice you choose to be embarrassed once you make a mistake you can either dwell on that mistake or you can stand up and keep walking try and do things that would normally make you feel embarrassed or cringe like mm, this is too cringy like you get what i'm trying to say so basically get comfortable with being uncomfortable hear me out you are signaling to your brain and you're telling your brain that i just did this thing and nothing happened it's called exposure therapy for example filming in public i've always see i've struggled with filming in public like when i started this youtube thing i struggled with filming in public you know i'm even going far leave public how about filming in front of your friends filming in front of your family these things can be so embarrassing because of the way they look at you the way they stare the way they say they are you know all those side talks especially filming in front of your mom or filming from front of your dad you know the way african parents can be now all these things they could be very very embarrassing when you intentionally start to do these things you start to see that oh there's actually nothing there at the end of the day how i dealt with filming in public as long as i'm not recording anyone intentionally like as long as i don't bring my camera and i put it to your face and i force you and i do all those things as long as i'm not doing that as long as i'm not in your space i'm good to go if you like stay from now to tomorrow i'm not disturbing you in any way i'm not filming you it has to be done at the end of the day i'm never going to see you again and i'm not about to put myself through the feeling of guilt and shame for somebody that i would never see again tomorrow i have to do this i have to film in public i have to film in front of my parents i have to film in front of my friends this is my job if i don't do this i won't eat you know so you tell your brain this thing at the end of the day you just have to sit your ass there and do it this is what life is all about you have to keep on moving you do not dwell on your mistakes you do not dwell on your embarrassment if you feel embarrassed good for you stand up and continue to move this is what would help you build your self-confidence over time all right so the fourth tip on building your self-confidence is declarations I call them declarations okay as a christian girly growing up this is what i've always heard declarations this is what i've always read in the bible declarations this is what i've always heard in church sunday school declarations nowadays people call them affirmations whatever works for you as long as you understand my point which is speaking positivity into your life 
then we are on the same page you know what i mean so you want to call them affirmations you want to call them declaration i call them declarations i call them confessions so i have confessions i have declarations i have things that i speak into my life every single day to boost my confidence it is right there on my notion app i call them daily confessions daily de declarations so i say these things to myself i am strong i am confident i am healthy i am wealthy i am successful i have peace of mind i am filled with joy i am filled with unlimited joy my own declarations are drawn from the bible okay so i constantly declare bible verses over my life affirmations good for you go on the internet there are several positive affirmations that you could always speak into your life these are like positive things positive words that you could always speak into your life speak into your soul that you could always speak into your spirit these things work they come to pass it may not work immediately but it works and i am a living testimony of declarations working because i have seen it work in my life every minute you get declare positive things feed your soul with positivity don't wait for anybody to tell you don't wait for anybody to do that for you don't wait for anybody to come and be telling you oh you are strong you are this do it yourself this is why you have mouth this is why god gave you mouth say these things yourself get a list get a journal get anything you want to get a notepad on your iphone notes like you have iphones like you have phones like the notes on your phones just have like six to seven statements that you say to yourself every morning or you say to yourself every night before you sleep things that you say to yourself every single day i am healthy i am strong and I, I am brilliant i have i am filled with ideas i have business ideas the tongue is powerful this is why we should be careful of the things that we say sixth step is to stop chasing perfection stop it nobody is perfect stop that why are you doing that why are you chasing perfection it is not possible i know what is funny somebody on the internet would always point out your flaws very simple somebody a stranger on the internet is always waiting for you to make one mistake so that they can point it out and because you've been chasing perfection because you've been trying so hard to be perfect immediately they point out those flaws you are going to be so sad you're going to be so mad you're going to be so angry because you are chasing perfection no matter how perfect you think a video is or no matter how perfect you think a picture is somebody will still tell you that you see that thing there assuming you removed it it would have been better somebody will still say something like that and immediately you see those comments you start to feel insecure you start to feel bad about yourself you start to feel sad you start to feel angry and this is because in the first place you were chasing perfection you were trying so hard to be perfect and it shocked you when somebody pointed out a flaw that even you yourself did not see because you were chasing perfection and this would immediately bring down your self-esteem like if your self-esteem was here and you saw that comment your self-esteem will be here immediately and honestly this thing happened to me recently and i'm going to share it with you guys because i need you to know that it happens to every single person it happens to the best of us you guys know that lately i have been in love with tiktok like i just opened a tiktok account and i just started growing that tiktok account so i've been posting videos on my tiktok there was this particular video that i posted that is almost at 1 million views like it's almost at 800k views like it's getting to 1 million views like it's growing every single day and that video is giving me what they call it followers every single day it was um i put i put on the screen it was i was just sorting out my makeup whatever like my makeup space like i was trying to sort it out like it was dirty and i was cleaning it and i was just i just got new storage and i was sorting it out you guys know that i made a youtube video about it like on that day i had a youtube video that i did and on that day i also had a tiktok video and in my youtube video i was washing my brushes because my brushes were dirty and i was washing them and i put it in my youtube video you guys saw when i was washing my brushes okay but halfway through i got tired and i just couldn't do it anymore i have so many brushes like my brushes are much i have like big brushes small brushes they are plenty so if i'm going to sit down there washing all those brush i needed energy and strength and again i was also looking at the sunlight because i needed lights to film my tiktok so you know what i did i was like i've already washed some brushes let me just keep the ones that i've washed somewhere and keep the dirty ones 
there also just to separate them and okay later i'll go watch the dirty brush and i filmed the tiktok video like that i didn't care because honestly it's life it's not every day our brushes are clean so i filmed the tiktok video with um the neat brushes and with the dirty brushes and i put it inside the clip i did not remove the dirty brushes and i did not remove the clean brushes i kept it there intentionally why because i'm being real like it's not every single day that we have clean brushes clean makeup brushes do you get so i just did it like that and i posted that video i didn't even care what people would say that was not even the whole point of the video the whole point of the video was me sorting out my makeup do you get me I tell you that out of 100 percent we had about 40 percent of people that did not focus on the purpose of that video and the only thing they were focusing was on was your brushes are dirty go clean your brushes why didn't you clean your brushes ew you have dirty brushes ew dirty girl those were the kind of comments that i was getting and i was like it's not even that deep you literally also saw clean brushes there but your eyes you close your eyes and you intentionally did not talk about those ones and your eyes went straight to the dirty brushes that I did not wash and because of a 5 seconds clip or 10 seconds clip, it just automatically assumed that I am a dirty person and I don't keep my brushes neat and I don't clean my brushes just because of um, 15 seconds video. You just judged me immediately and you just pointed out those flaws and trust me, if I was chasing perfection and if I cared, I would have taken down that video immediately I started to see this comment. But you know what I did? I pinned the video. <laughs> See, this sentence, the kind of energy I'm giving is, I don't care about your mother energy. That is the energy I'm giving in this sentence. Three. As long as like I've, I've been saying this from the beginning, because I want you guys to also have this kind of mindset. As long as it's not hurting anybody, as long as you're comfortable in it, as long as you feel good in it, and it is not killing anyone, do it. That was the kind of energy I, I left the video there. Because of that video, I got my first TikTok, um, what do you call it, sponsorship. So a brand reached out to me, they wanted to work with me on TikTok. I'm gonna put it on the screen. From that video that people were complaining about, from that not so perfect video, a brand wanted to work with me, but of course I turned it down because honestly guys, I'm not ready to work with any brand on TikTok right now. That is not the face of my life. When I'm ready for collaborations, I will start collaborations. But for now, I'm in a different stage, you know. This video got me followers. This video got me exposure. My TikTok grew. Like, when I mean grew, I was getting followers like every single day from this video. And assuming I was chasing perfection, I would have taken that video down just because I didn't like the comments that I was seeing about the brushes. And in my head, I'm like... You don't know the full story you watch like 15 seconds clip and you can't judge me from that 15 seconds clip and this is how we should work in every area of our life because like i said before once somebody out there just points out just one flaw it takes just one flaw for somebody to point out once they just point out one flaw like this it's over your self-confidence goes like this because they've pointed out the thing that you know about that flaw you know you know what that flaw is but you didn't know that somebody would notice it why maybe because of the way you edited the picture maybe because of the way you the way you stood to hide that part of your body or the way or the kind of dress you wore to hide that part of your body and somebody still noticed your big stomach or somebody still noticed your folds at the back somebody still noticed and they still talked about it your self-confidence will reduce immediately just because you tried your best to be perfect you tried your best to hide those flaws and at the end of the day a stranger on the internet still noticed it the sixth point is to practice self-love i know you've heard this many times and i'm not going to say too much about it because i know you've heard about self-love and i also preach self-love a lot but it is very very important that you practice self-love this is about loving yourself genuinely about acknowledging your flaws acknowledging your mistakes acknowledging your insecurities acknowledging your weaknesses and acknowledging your strengths and still loving yourself self-love is not attached to anything it is not attached to your wins it's not attached to your success because once you don't win anymore once you don't meet a certain goal you're going to start to hate yourself because you attach to your self-love 
to that goal that you want to achieve you attached your self-love to that win that you want to get do not let failure and external things define your what once you master that once you start loving yourself once you stop being too hard on yourself your confidence will grow guys finally for my last point i tend to make this the last point because i feel like it is not the first thing you should work on but it's also very important you work on this and this is taking care of your physical appearance looking good is actually very very important but then again you have to fix your mindset first because you can dress for Africa even if you dress for Africa from now to tomorrow even if you're the best dressed and you haven't yet fixed your mindset you haven't yet you know all the points that I said in the beginning from point one to point six you haven't yet worked on those things you will still have a very very low self-esteem no matter how good you look so speaking about physical appearance honestly I see not taking care of yourself as a way of disrespect to yourself you don't respect yourself enough and that is why you neglect your physical appearance I'm talking about having the most expensive clothes or the most expensive things that's not what i'm talking about my main priority is look good and smell nice those are the two things that you should always take care of look good and smell nice look good and smell nice if you like don't have a good sense of style you know what we'll talk about that one later that's a conversation for another day but the main point of this is to look good and smell nice nobody's telling you to go and buy the most expensive perfume nobody's telling you that at the end of the day a good deodorant would work a good body spray would work as long as you are taking care of yourself you look good your physical appearance is attractive okay honestly it helps to boost your self-confidence because when you look good on the outside it has a way of boosting your self-confidence and i feel like we've seen this work like we ladies we've seen this when you make a new hair when you make like new braids you feel different like there's this energy you start to get like you don't want anybody to talk to you because all of a sudden you look good the same thing with nails like when you make your nails you start to show off your nails like every now and then you start to you know do like this all the time you start to type and you're typing this way i mean that is like confidence radiating because you know that you look good you know that your nails look good your toenails your toenails look good your hair look good your outfit look good there's this different energy you just have all of a sudden this different vibe you just have all of a sudden why because you took care of yourself why because your physical appearance is intact you look good so because you look good you feel good so this immediately just boosts your confidence from nowhere the way you take care of yourself shows the world the way they should take care of you shows the world the way they should address you, you know when they say dress the way you want to be addressed that is exactly how the world will see you yeah, so that's it guys we have come to the end of this video and i hope you enjoyed this video trust me i have like more than seven points but i decided to make it seven points okay maybe i might end up doing a part two who knows but i really really enjoyed this topic and i also hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video bye